Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me this morning. It is a beautiful day today. It's going to be a beautiful day today in Moose Jaw. Don't know where you're watching me from or what time of the day you might be watching me from, but it is uh, going to be plus eight in Moose Jaw. So that is going to be phenomenal for us today. So that's great and uh, not sure all who's joining it. Garnet, good to have you and Kathy, good to have you uh, on already this morning. We'll take a couple more minutes and uh, see who else is going to join in. It's not always so easy for me on my computer to tell who's here and who's not here, but I'm always honored to uh, spend this time on a Friday morning. I really look forward to it. Uh, to uh to just spend some time talking to you about the lord and sharing with you what god has on my heart at the end of a, a busy week lorraine and linda good to have you rod good to have you also joining us uh, uh, this morning so i'm going to start with uh the idea and what i want to talk to you about is the attitude and the practice of perseverance that you must cultivate this attitude if you desire to be more than average in life so if you desire to have an above average marriage or to excel in sports or um, music your career even your spiritual life you are going to need this attitude you're going to have to put into practice perseverance now the psalm we are looking at today is Psalms 129. It's one of the songs of ascent. There are 15 songs of ascents which are covered in Psalms 120 to 134. Now these are songs that the nation of Israel sang together as they came from all over the land and ascended Mount Zion to Jerusalem. It happened three times a year when they celebrated for celebration and for festivals. Now, like most of these, we don't really know who wrote them and we're not sure of the exact time period, but some would suggest that it was written right after the exile. So let's look at verse one and two, just two verses this morning. It says, many times they have attacked me from my youth up. Let Israel say, many times they have attacked me from my youth. And then it says, yet they have not prevailed against me. Now, the way this, these Psalms, these Psalms of Ascent are written, I want you to imagine a worship leader basically singing verses one and then calling to the congregation, the nation, to echo back verse two. So the echo would be, yet they have not prevailed against me. I wanna put that in your spirit, whatever you might be going through today, yet they have not prevailed against me. Now, when the psalmist is talking about my, from my youth up, the reference to youth is actually to the nation of Israel, not the person writing the psalm. But there is, there is this, this Hebrew technique in poetry that really reminds the nation that uh, the nation is suffering, but within the nation suffering, there are individuals that are suffering. So the idea when he say it's my, it's really referring to the nation. Also the idea of being from my youth up, it's a reference to the teenage years of Israel, a reference possibly to the time in Egypt. So from Abraham, through the patriarchs, they were there were ups and downs and struggles, but it wasn't until the end, until the uh, Israelites ended up in Egypt, that they really were defined as a nation. And the more they grew, the more they became persecuted and uh, attacked and even enslaved. The key to understanding Israel is really verse two yet they have not prevailed against me. What, it's, what 
is the attitude that has been necessary for the nation of Israel to exist and prosper today? The answer is perseverance. If you're going to if you're going to get past anything in life, you are going to need perseverance. So if you're going to be something more than average, you're going to need this quality in your life. You need to be able to push past the barriers because there will be, and to grow and to change. And the idea for verse two is we persevered because with God's help, we will prevail. Now, the story of the Hebrew people is literally a remarkable story. The only possible explanation for why they continue to be a nation today is the God factor. They are, they, they are the longest running distinctly ethnic people in the history of the world. Yet it would be hard to find a people who have been more attacked, persecuted, and enslaved in history. Most nations look back at their history and talk and celebrate their accomplishments. But for the Hebrew people, they look back and they celebrate that they have survived by the power and protection of their God. Now, here are several things that we have today that many of them we take for granted, but they came from the Jewish people. Things like uh, our jeans that we wear, lipstick, uh, the ballpoint pen, contraceptives, instant coffee, the television remote control. That's, that's an important invention in history. And the traffic lights, genetic engineering, virtu and virtual reality all came from the Hebrew people. The theory of relativity and even having days off, the whole idea of days off came from the concept of the Sabbath at discount stores and pawn shops and Prozac and Valium and uh, the the polio vaccine, radiation, chemotherapy, the artificial uh, kidney dialysis machine, the defibrillator, the cardiac pacemaker, and even Google. We get all of that from the Jewish people. So they have made major contributions, even though they were a small group, even though they're one of the most persecuted group, they have made one of the most largest contributions to our society. Now, why have the Jewish people been so persecuted? God declared them openly and publicly to be his people. And in so doing, I believe it initiated a cosmic war. There is an enemy and that is the prince of the power of this of the air, and that is Satan, who declared war on God's people, even though today we're not the Hebrew people, and even though we cannot claim all of their very specific promises, as but as the people of God, we are still engaged in this cosmic war. We must remind ourselves that the day that we turned our lives over to Jesus, that we did not board a cruise ship, that in fact we boarded a battleship. Ephesians chapter 6 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, that's interesting to think about because there are critics of Christianity today that would tell us that most Christians uh, choose Christianity because they're somewhat weak, maybe even simple-minded, or they need a crutch to lean on. But the reality is, is if you are not a disciple of Jesus, you have simply assimilated and adopted the value system of the world. But if you choose to be a disciple of Jesus, a Christ follower, that requires courage and strength and perseverance because you are going against the flow. You are standing against the attacks that come from the physical realm and the spiritual realm. So much so that the only way that it is possible to have what you need on this journey of life, it comes through the, the provision and the power 
and the presence of Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 says, Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. So we can persevere because of the indwelling presence of Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, 1 John chapter 4 says this, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. What are you ready to give up on today? Maybe you joined in this video teaching because God wants to tell you, you need to persevere and you will prevail. You know, this has been a difficult season in so many ways for so many people, but I absolutely believe we will prevail. One of the songs that we have sang during this pandemic has been one that has really ministered so much to me. It simply says, I'm going to see a victory because the battle belongs to the Lord. Let that verse, let that song ring out in your heart. I, I love this, the first two verses and the second verse. It just simply says, yet they have not prevailed against me. I want you to say that today. Yet they have not prevailed against me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That even in the difficult times of life, we can persevere and we will prevail. I speak that over your people today. Would you bless them? In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again. My goodness, we have a great weekend planned for you. On Saturday night, we have our baptism service, and we have uh, really about almost, uh, I think, nine people getting baptized. So you, we want our church to come out and be a part of that. Uh, Pastor Jeremy said it well on Sunday. He says, you know, it is a big celebration. We want to celebrate what God is doing, and nothing more we need to celebrate than people giving their lives to Jesus and taking the step of baptism. You know, this weekend we are starting, the, it's the first Sunday of Advent. I can't believe that we are already in the first Sunday of Advent, but we are. And I'm um, kicking off a new series, Hope Filled Christmas. And uh, we are going to be talking about the presence, not the presence under the tree, but the presence of Christmas. In I know it's going to be a blessing. Our worship teams, they are ready for you. Uh, so please plan to come out and join us either online or in person. God bless you, Connie, and I love you guys very, very much. Have an amazing day.